an operating system for the shop floor, uh, you know, uh, if you think about this, this metaphor, right, basically operating system have uh, three parts, right? It has the interfaces through which uh, people interact with the system. Uh, in our case, there could be, you know, tablets or smartphones. Uh, they can even be like small buttons or, or machines uh, that we hook up to the system. It has a, a driver layer that allows you to, to connect things to the system. Uh, and it has a, a central processing or a brain, if you like. Um, and that, that's obviously the cloud in, in, in Tulip's world, right? So the second layer, the driver layer is, uh, you know, people use different names for that. We, we use I, you know, IoT or industrial IoT. That's the realm this stuff falls into, uh, which is essentially very small, uh, uh, inexpensive computers that you can deploy uh, nodes as nodes to, to the floor. And they provide connectivity to machines or sensors. Uh, and, the, and, and that's sort of like a typical sort of IoT statement that I just made. The thing that we do very differently uh, enable this operating system is that we want people to just plug and play sensors, whether it's a, you know, a barcode scanner or an RFID or just a simple proximity sensor, or it could be a full machine doing uh, you know, surface mount technology type operation and you just want you know, to communicate with that machine. Uh, those things in our heads are building blocks and they need to have drivers. Uh, what, uh, what, what the cloud does uh, essentially is two things. First, it's an authoring environment that allows you to create those Shuffler apps because an operating system has applications. Uh, what, what, when you think about an app today, even just the app on your phone, uh, you, you don't really think about it, but it, you know, it has some flow, it has some, some, some data that it's uh, collecting or, or you're consuming, and it allows you to do things. For example, uh, talk to your bank, right? Uh, so typically, you know, developers write those apps, and we call them information technology apps or something like that. Uh, what is that for manufacturing? Like, we don't, you know, there, there's no, there, there's no tens of thousands of developers that, that that live in that manufacturing space that can sit down and write those apps because there's no real market for that. So, what our cloud authoring environment does is allows you to just uh, drag and drop and very quickly power in a PowerPoint style kind of create those apps. Uh, connect all the different uh, data um, uh, faucets and, 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 and links and basically create a pretty sophisticated app in minutes and deploy it to the floor. And that app could guide an operator or facilitate a quality uh, assurance process or can train an individual how to do something or it can um, monitor a machine process uh, and nobody wrote code. And then because those apps are live and active, uh, you can just uh, hop on the back end and start querying our uh, analytics system. And this is real-time analytics, so anything that happens on the floor that a, a person or a machine or a sensor uh, uh, did, uh, you, can, you, can, you, you can basically introspect and crisscross it with a bunch of uh, uh, tools that we've created. Uh, and that's pretty powerful, that combination of, uh, you know, of uh, those apps, uh, the, the data they collect, uh, the sensors and machines they talk to, and uh, that 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 is the, the, I think that's the core of, of, of this idea of op, of an operating system that you know eventually what will happen f to this platform and the way we're designing it is that it will be e extensible. So we're not we're not doing this right now, but the idea is that uh, the device manufacturers could create their own. Uh, drivers and certify them for the platform and uh, you know because manufacturing is as big as what humanity does right that's like what we do we're a technological species making things so you can't imagine that one company will be able to know all the things about biopharma and automotive and electronics so what will happen is like various templates for those apps would emerge so people could very simply say well you know I'm a automotive uh, supply chain manufacturer and I'm you know I build this type of widget and this is like the best practices to build this type of widget as opposed to someone you know using the system to create uh, a process to support uh, drug development in a, in a biopharma for example the connecting the connecting uh, uh, thread here between you know those very different industries in this example I just gave you is um, the fact that it, it in manufacturing, Despite what you know, popular tech uh, 
press might say, uh, you know, people will remain uh, a, a dominant factor because people is the most uh, uh, expensive and uh, intelligent computer you would have on your line. Uh, you know, it's people who would like have the spark to figure out how to make the process better and it's manufacture something, you know, 2x cheaper and it's people who would, uh, you know, train the next batch of people and it's people when they're tired and had a bad day that would make the terrible mistake and like reduce your quality. So y you have to create, you know, I think we can agree by now that, you know, uh, there's certain things computers and machines do very well and there's certain things people do very well. And I think to have, uh, you know, uh, manufacturing that is set for this decade, era, whatever, uh, you, you kind of have to build interfaces for those people uh, in, in the environment in which they do work. Uh, and, and that, you know, that's where we see, that's why, you know, at Tulip, like one of the things we're saying is that, you know, behind every product there are, there are people. Uh, and, uh, you know, we, we don't see that changing, uh, no matter what is being made.